Saturday afternoon, we welcome you to the Stroh Center in Bowling Green, Ohio for Mid-American Conference Women's Basketball on ESPN. Today, the Bowling Green Falcons take on the Cardinals of Ball State. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us alongside Ryan Strodebeck. I'm Brad Wozniki. For the sixth time in program history, the Ball State Cardinals won 20-plus games last season, and the Cardinals well on their way to doing that again this season. With their best start in program history, a record of 12-1, the Cardinals lead the MAC in scoring better than 83 points a game. Bowling Green going to have their hands full today. They are going to have their hands full against this Cardinal team. They can do everything well. They can rebound, they can pass the ball, they can defend, and they can shoot the basketball. Bowling Green definitely going to have a challenge on their hands this afternoon against this Cardinal team. And all five starters for this Ball State team average in double figures. It starts with Mariah Monaco. Monaco and preseason all max selection leads the team with 17 points a game and she's not shy from long range attempting eight threes a game and knocking them down 33 percent of the time. Yeah, Monaco, she scored in double figures in all but one game and she leads the team in that scoring category like you said but Basketball runs deep in her family, and Bob Huggins is uh, her uncle. He's the West Virginia head coach, but she's well-decorated, 12th all-time on Ball State's scoring uh, list. But most importantly, she's a senior leader for this team. This is her last season. She's definitely going to make it a memorable one. Monaco is definitely a force to be reckoned with on Ball State. Bowling Green going to have their hands full with her tonight. And then when you look at the Falcons and their numbers on the season, it starts with Carly Santoro averaging a double-double, but the play of Andrea Cecil has been key throughout the season. She's averaging in double figures. The sophomore from Oak Harbor High School does a great job of attacking the basket and finding her teammates for open looks. Yeah, Andrea Cecil does a lot of things well as well. I mean, you look at it, she's just behind Carly Santoro in points and rebounds for the team lead. She averaged 11.8 points per game, 5.8 rebounds per game. But what she does well on the court is she's very composed as a sophomore, and that's what makes her such a good player. The ability to not let the emotions of the game get to her very much is able to really keep her cool and makes her that much better of a player as a sophomore. And Andrea Ciso coming off 11 points in Bowling Green's last game against Eastern Michigan. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups and the tip-off right here on ESPN. Welcome back inside the Stroh Center here in Bowling Green, Ohio. We are moments away from the tip-off here on ESPN. The 8-5 Bowling Green Falcons taking on the 12-1 Ball State Cardinals. Falcons lead the all-time series with a record of 44-20, but Ball State, as of late, has won the last six meetings, including last year a 91-70 victory, which the Cardinals dominated the glass 45 to 25, the advantage in rebounding. Renee Bennett and Carmen Grande led the way, each had 20 points. Bowling Green was led by Katerion Thompson with 16. And let's get to the starting lineups. First for the Ball State Cardinals, you have Franny Frazier, the five foot nine senior, followed by Carmen Grande. Grande, the leader in the Mid-American Conference in assists. She's number two in the nation at better than nine a game. Then you have Jasmine Sands, Destiny Washington, and Mariah Monaco. Looking at the Bowling Green Falcons, the point guard, Sidney Lambert, followed by Carly Santoro, the number two rebounder in the MAC. Andrea Cecil, Haley Puck, and Jane Euchre. And it looks as though we are going to have one change today, a late change for... Bowling Green as Claire Gloniak will get the start over Jane Euchre. Gloniak, the redshirt freshman at six foot two. So great opportunity for the redshirt freshman. Yeah, Claire Gloniak, she sat all last, pretty much all of last season with an injury, so that gave her a medical redshirt. She has proven that she can play a, a big 
position for Bowling Green, a position that they really haven't had much of in the years past. She is a post player, and let's see if she can make a difference here against this Ball State team. And Jane Euchre did strong performance against Western Michigan in which she finished with 11. And Ball State wins the tip. Cardinals in the road black, Bowling Green in the home white. Ball State coming off a dominant performance over the Miami Red Hawks. 86 to 61 was the final. As Bowling Green keeps Ball State off the board on their first possession. That's something Ball State does well. They get the offensive rebounds and Bowling Green's gonna need to box out tonight. Gloniak, good look to Santoro. Looked like it was partially blocked. That was Destiny Washington who got over there. Now the pull-up jumper, and Santoro knocks it down. Carly Santoro averaging better than 14 a game. She's tied for 10th in the MAC in scoring as Grande has it taken away. Another pull-up jumper. This one no good. And pushed up ahead. The finish and one. Franny Frazier will go to the line to try and complete the three-point play. Nice job by Frazier to what, or narrow that gap between her and Lambert, really giving her good position on the left-hand side. And Lambert really didn't have a chance to block it, so he tried fouling, and Frazier got it up and good. Franny Frazier, the five-foot-nine senior from Columbus, Ohio. Completes the three-point play. Cardinals by one. Just over a minute gone by here in the opening quarter. Look at Bowling Green's last game against Eastern Michigan. It was a bit of a heartbreaker. Losing on a tip-in by Amani Jackson with .4 seconds remaining. It was the first time Eastern Michigan had won here in Bowling Green since 2005. Danielle Minot led the way for the Eagles with 19 points. Sasha Daly finished with 15. Gloniak on the offensive glass finds Haley Puck and she knocks it down. You'll remember Haley Puck had the game tying three pointer against Eastern Michigan before the tip in by Jackson. Now Monaco for three, that quick release, tough to stop. Yeah, quick release, ready to catch the ball as soon, ready to catch and shoot as soon as she gets the basketball, makes her tough to guard. Into the hands of Cecil, guarded by Monaco. One thing Bowling Green has to do is limit their turnovers. Over the last two games, the Falcons averaging 23 turnovers. That, that's something they did well in non-conference play was the ability to hold on to the basketball. And so far through conference play, they haven't found as much success. Saw there Bowling Green head coach Jennifer Roos in her sixth season as the head coach of the program. She knew after that game against Eastern Michigan that because of those turnovers, Eastern Michigan just had too many opportunities. And trying to get it inside. Last touch by the Cardinals. And there is Brady Sally. Sixth year as the head coach for Ball State. A career record of 243 and 184. He spent eight seasons as the head coach at Eastern Illinois and had a record of 136 and 109. And Gloniak looking for Santoro. Not a bad idea there on the cut by Carly. Bullet Green definitely looking to try to get it into the post a lot here early. Lambert, good. That's a good sign for the Falcons. Sydney Lambert has started all 73 games of her career. She was held scoreless for the first time all season against Eastern Michigan. As Monaco off the mark. Bowling Green by two. Trying to make this a two possession game. Cecil pull up jumper. Left it short, here comes Grande. And well defended. The extra pass. And too strong on the three, despite a pretty good look for Jasmine Sands, the sophomore from Wisconsin.
Gloniak wants it in the post, but the help side is there. Now the double team. Cecil in the paint and an offensive foul. You can see Bowling Green playing with that sense of urgency. The Ball State also doing a good job of speeding up this Falcon offense. Yeah, Bowling Green passing the ball around a lot right now, and really Ball State's just stepping in any gap that Bowling Green tries to drive into. I mean, you saw Cecil right there try to drive into a gap, but Ball State well defended, picking up that offensive charge. The Cardinals open the season winning their first 11 games. Then Mid-American Conference play began, and the Cardinals fell 69-65 to Central Michigan. The Chippewas the favorite to win the Mid-American Conference West. And this will be an official's timeout. 6.04 remaining in the first quarter. Bowling Green leading by two. Monaco finding the range early. And Sidney Lambert able to respond. Bowling Green 8, Ball State 6 with four minutes gone by here in the first quarter. Brad Wozniki and Ryan Strode back here with you. And no good on that one. Destiny Washington taking the jumper. Santoro right back to Lambert. Set up the offense. I think it's important for Bowling Green to get out to a good start here against Ball State. After one quarter of play, Ball State has held the lead in pretty much all but three games they've played here this season as they average 20 points per first quarter and giving up just 14. This is a proven Ball State team with big wins this season over Vanderbilt and Purdue along with Butler and Western Kentucky. Off the turnover. Three-pointer on the way. Good. Coming off the bench, that's Malia Howard Bass. Five-foot-eight freshman. Shooting 38% from long range this season. Inside Gloniak. Off the side of the backboard. And it will be Ball State basketball. Katerion Thompson and Jane Euchre will check in. Katerion Thompson coming off the team high performance with 18 points on five of seven shooting from long range against Eastern Michigan. It was the second time she had hit five threes in a game this year. The other time came against Xavier. Monaco inside. Howard Bass again, got it. Cardinals by four. Yeah, hot, hot start by Howard Bass off the bench here for Ball State. Kind of a pick me up that, since that timeout. See how Bowling Green responds. Looking to get it back to a one possession game and Lambert can't handle that pass. Here's Carmen Grande, nine and a half assists per game. Also gets it done at the defensive end. Better than two and a half steals. And another for Howard Bass. Nine points off the bench. This is another reason why Ball State leads the MAC in scoring because the depth that they have at the offensive end as the Cardinals commit the second team foul. And checking in is Ashlyn Brown, the freshman from Chillicothe, Ohio. Lambert looking for a teammate. Able to throw it in the backcourt for Santoro. Santoro coming off her 
Ninth double-double of the season with 12 points and 13 boards. Dangerous pass. And quickly to the scores table is Franny Frazier. Howard Bastix picked up her first personal. Cecil up top. With the left hand, no good. Euchre battling. Coming away with it with Sands. Monaco baseline. Frazier underneath. And one. Second time today, Franny Frazier will have a chance at a three point play. Ball State just flat out wanted that basketball more. Yeah, second chance points, opportunities. A big story against Eastern Michigan for Bowling Green. Uh, they got a lot of offense rebounds, Bowling Green, but it only connected on three second chance points. And it's a second chance point for Eastern Michigan, which lifted them late in that ball game as well. So Bowling Green needs to find a way to keep Ball State off the offensive boards here this afternoon. Haley Puck back into the game for Bowling Green and joined by Maddie Cole. Cole has not seen a ton of minutes this season, especially as of late. The junior from Northview High School, very physical down low. Definitely a hustle player for Jennifer Roos. And Monaco a little too aggressive there. Foul starting to pile up for the Cardinals. And one more in Bowling Green. will be shooting two from the line. Right now, Ball State on a 12-0 run. Haley Puck, a little hesitation move. Good look to Thompson. Knocks it down. Much needed for the Falcons. As Katerion Thompson continues to have the hot hand from beyond the arc. Monaco, the answer. You got it. That was too easy if you're Bowling Green defensively. Yeah, no one picked her up coming down the court. Jane Euchre too late. And closing out on Monaco because she has that quick release. Lambert, little contact there from Grande. And it will be Ball State basketball. Look at this Ball State team, where they rank in the MAC. We mentioned the scoring, leading the Mid-American Conference. They're fifth in the MAC at allowing just over 63 points a game. Field goal percentage first at better than 44%. Blocks, they lead the Mac at better than five a game. And assists per game, over 20. Inside of two minutes to play in the first quarter. Euchre won it in the post. Frazier read it all the way. And the loose ball, Bowling Green able to recover it. Lambert tried to dump it inside. Bodies all over the floor. And possession arrow to the Falcons. And Ryan, just what you mentioned, the hot starts that we've seen from Ball State throughout the season already plus 20 here in the first quarter, less than 90 seconds to play. Yeah, Ball State, it's been the three ball that's really done it for them. We got nine off the bench from Howard Bass. Uh, and Right now, Bowling Green needs to look to defend the perimeter a lot better. Right on pace to reach 83 points a game or more. And a blocking foul against Grande. She couldn't believe the call. First personal on Grande. It's five different players with a personal foul. And Thompson no good on the first. Katerion Thompson now 11 of 14 from the line this season. One for two to get it back to a 
single digit deficit. Brown had it stripped by Kennedy Williams, but the Cardinals maintain possession. Now the drive off glass. Jasmine Sams. Yeah, able to just drive right around her defender. Made it an easier basket for herself. Sams, the transfer from St. Louis. Here's Maddie Cole blocked. Monaco picks it up. Sams. Grande off the iron and Maddie Cole and Monaco battling on the back side foul will go against Monaco her second personal and that could be key for Bowling Green Monaco one of those players that draws so much attention if, if she's on the bench for a little while see if the Falcons can work their way back into this game yeah, definitely goes in favor of the Falcons. And Monaco right there, she was trying to say that she was held on to by Maddie Cole, but obviously saw Monaco push off of Maddie Cole, and that led to her second personal. One more to come for Maddie Cole. As Destiny Washington returns. Maddie Cole one for two. Those were her first two free throw attempts of the season. The offensive board by Haley Puck, Bowling Green. The chance at the final shot of the first quarter. Thompson. Down to five seconds, Haley Puck, the runner. Euchre, one more time, no. Bowling Green can't cash in on their final possession of the opening quarter. Ball State on the road, leading by 10. Malia Howard-Bass coming off the bench, knocking down three, three-pointers. It's the Cardinals in front by 10. Ball State Cardinals shot 50% from the field in the first quarter and five of nine from long range. As a result, the Cardinals lead by 10 and they have the basketball to start quarter number two. What adjustments are you looking for, Ryan, from Bowling Green? Bowling Green needs to close out a lot better on the defensive end because they're allowing a lot of three-point opportunities for Ball State. Obviously, there's nothing you can do about all the three-point plays that they're getting from the end ones, but... Bowling Green, I think, defensively close out better on, and on the offensive end, take care of the basketball. They've, they've rushed a lot of passes and really have looked unorganized so far on the offensive end. Chance at a three-point play for Carmen Grande. Grande, all-MAC honorable mention as a sophomore, had 244 assists last season. It was a program record in a season. As the Cardinals now lead by 13. Sierra Thompson in for the first time today. Here's Haley Puck off the screen. That one grazed the iron. Ball State does such a nice job of closing quickly on shooters. You can see the Cardinals have good overall size and length. They do. They got a little smaller with the loss of Renee Bennett from last season, but they're definitely a good passing team as we're looking here, but they have the ability to space out the floor because they have a lot of shooters on the court. Bad turnover there for the Cardinals. See if Bowling Green can take advantage. Just to see about this hot start from Ball State this season, they are only returning two starters from their team, and they lost eight letter winners from last season and bringing in seven newcomers. So to have the success they are with all these newcomers is really a good uh, thing to see if you're a Ball State fan. Katerion Thompson for three, not this time. 
You know, Jill Morrison was one of the players that helped lead the way in the success of Ball State last season. The scoop and the score for Carmen Grande. Grande, prior to Ball State, a member of the U16 Spanish national team. Back in the hands of Puck. You have Carly Santoro and Claire Gloniak ready to check in. Sierra Thompson inside to Euchre. And great hustle there. Ashlyn Brown able to save it for the Cardinals. It's the hustle you love to see from a freshman. Right now on the offensive end as well, Bowling Green looking to try to dump the ball into their post a lot, but a lot of their passes are either getting deflected or just thrown away, and Bowling Green needs to just be smarter with their idea of trying to get it into the post. Inside, Brown off glass and good. It was not easy, it was contested. And the Cardinals on a 7-0 run to start the second quarter. Inside, Sierra Thompson, her first points. Thompson playing just over 15 minutes a game, had a season high 11 points against Florida Atlantic. That's part of a very successful trip for Jennifer Roos and her team over the holiday break. That was back around Thanksgiving. The Falcons went down to Florida. Jasmine Sams back on the floor. Mariah Monaco remains on the bench with those two personal fouls and Ball State remains in control. Thompson gets her own miss. Lambert pull up, no good. Thompson, another offensive board and she will shoot two. That's good effort right there by Katerian Thompson. Not giving up on her shot, not giving up on the play couple offensive rebounds for her. Now she's going to be rewarded with two freebies at the free throw line. Terion Thompson, four points so far. One of two at the line. You see the numbers on Monaco. Came out firing from long range as expected. Six points on the day. First one was good for Katerion Thompson. Aaliyah Walker, the sophomore from Indianapolis, Checked in. And one for two. Andrea Cecil ready to return for Bowling Green. And no good for Howard Bass. Here comes Thompson in transition. Lambert. And Santoro called for the offensive foul. Dipped the shoulder there and that drew the whistle. Here it is one more time. Bowling Green faithful did not agree. There wasn't much argument from Bowling Green as a team. Yeah, it kind of looked like she lowered her shoulder. Could have won either way. If you you ask me. Three-pointer well off the mark. Not the look the Cardinals wanted on that last possession. Lambert gives it up to Santoro. Looking inside, good hands by Frazier. Stays with Bowling Green. Lambert almost ran into Santoro right there as she was trying to drive to the basket. Just doesn't seem like they're on the same page offensively. 
for the most part, Ball State has done a good job of taking away any post entries. The Lambert step back, no good. Rebounded by Washington. But again, the Cardinals turn it over, and Santoro, a little pump fake, draws the foul. Yeah, good job by Santoro. Nice jump stop. Pump fake, and got her defender in the air and drew the foul. Brady Sally cannot be happy with the five turnovers so far for Ball State. They've been a bit careless with the basketball, trying to push it up the floor. Carly Santoro, number two in the Mid-American Conference in rebounding behind Raina Frost of Central Michigan. Frost averaging better than 13 a game. Off the iron on the first, Bowling Green as a team, now three of seven at the line. Ball State a perfect three of three. Santoro has been named the MAC Player of the Week twice this season. One for two. <laughs> Approaching the halfway point of the second quarter. Ball State has led by double digits since the start of the quarter. They outscored Bowling Green 23 to 13 in the first 10 minutes. And inside for two, Oshlin Brown. Gloniak, nice touch pass to Cecil. Andrea Cecil cashes in from beyond the arc. Claire Gloniak showing why she deserves a start here tonight. And she had an offensive rebound early in the first. Santoro, another three. Gloniak on the offensive glass. Puts it back up and in. Gloniak played a season high 20 minutes against Eastern Michigan, giving Bowling Green a big lift right there. Now the defense chant from the Bowling Green faithful. Step back jumper, good. Jasmine Sams. A nice little step back right there. Able to free herself from the defender, got her a nice look at the basket. And here comes Grande. Lays it home. And just like that, Ball State pushes their lead to 14. And we have an official's timeout. 36-22 year score, Carmen Grande attacking and scoring. Jennifer Roos, tough one so far. Bowling Green men's basketball team with an overtime victory today on the road against Eastern Michigan. 75-71 the final. Strong performance from Antoine Lillard as the Falcons picked up their first MAC win of the season. Their 10th win overall. Bowling Green with the basketball trailing by 14. Less than four to play in the first half. Falcons with Lambert, Puck, Cole, Santoro, and Cecil on the floor. No good for Lambert. And the offensive board, Haley Puck three. Got it. <laughs> Haley Puck with her second three of the day. She's now two of three. And the Falcons, five of ten. Yeah, a lot of second chance opportunities for Bowling Green. And they're capitalizing here tonight. That's their eighth second chance point this afternoon. Second personal on Lambert. Sydney Lambert throughout her career has had some strong performances against this Ball State team. She's averaging 14 a game 
against the Cardinals. Grande, two more. Now nine points to go along with two rebounds and three assists. Santoro and Grande steps in front and fouled at the other end by Matty Cole. Not the first time today we've seen Carmen Grande go from one end to the other quickly. Yeah, and it was started off because Santoro wanted to hand the ball off to Sidney Lambert. So Santoro let the ball go, but Lambert didn't follow, and Grande just picked it up and went to the other end with the basketball. It's a case where you just got to read the play, possibly set up a backdoor cut there with Grande overplaying. Cardinals by 15. Grande, the first Ball State player to reach double figures. That's the scary thing about Grande, as well as she distributes the basketball. Also, very good at attacking. And last touched by Ball State. Ball State doing a nice job here today, just reading the eyes and reading the passes of Bowling Green. Bowling Green probably should do a lot of more pump fakes with the basketball, try to get their defenders going one way, and then, like you said, go back door a lot more, and maybe they can get some open baskets. Thompson and Thompson back on the floor for Bowling Green. Frazier returns for the Cardinals. Lambert working against Grande in the block, but a foul. Point Green being able to go to the line here against Ball State, but haven't found much success, just 50% from the line. Lambert good on the first. And for Sidney Lambert, it's a good sign that she's able to get to the line. She has not attempted a free throw in the previous three games. And two for two. Bowling Green staying within striking distance. Got to find a way to string some stops together. And Frazier on the drive. Ball State in the bonus. Frazier two for two at the line today. Six points in the ball game. Frazier has started 13 of the 14 games this season. Had a career high 20 points against Tennessee State. Also had her career high in rebounds with 11 against Southeast Missouri. Full court pressure. Up ahead, Lambert. Three-pointer in transition. Good shot right there by Sidney Lambert. Saw the defender. It was a two-on-one. Lambert saw the defender go to the post instead of come out on her, and she took advantage. Grande short. Ball State can reset. Down to 90 seconds to play in the first half. Grande for three. Off the iron, Thompson the board. Good opportunity for Bowling Green. Possibly make this a single digit ball game going into halftime. Lambert threw it away. And up ahead, Grande to Frazier. Bowling Green wanted a walk. It's another fast break basket for the Cardinals. They've got 11 points off of fast breaks today. Inside, Euchre got position. 
That's just a nice feed right there from Haley Puck. Nice bounce pass and able to get it to Euchre. Euchre had good positioning on the defender. Euchre, the ninth Bowling Green player to score. Just inside the arc, it's off the iron. Less than 20 seconds. Can the Falcons get a basket and carry some momentum in the halftime? And Haley Puck trying to get it inside. Here comes Frazier. Time winding down, Grande three. That's a backbreaker if you're Bowling Green. The Cardinals on the road will go to the locker room leading by 14. And Carmen Grande leading the way. She's got 14 points to lead all scores. Add in four steals, two rebounds, and four assists. The point guard getting it done. Halftime performance here at the Stroh Center as the Bowling Green Falcons trail the Ball State Cardinals 46 to 32 here on ESPN. Brad Wozniki and Ryan Stroh back here with you. And let's get to the first half highlights. Both teams came out firing. Carly Santoro knocking down an early jumper. Santoro just three points in the first half. Bowling Green has found the range, but Ball State, as expected, knocking him down from beyond the arc as well. Yeah, Ball State knocking him down at an efficient rate, six of 12 from downtown, but they used a nine nothing run that was fueled by Howard Bass in that, after a timeout in the first quarter that really propelled them in the lead, and Ball State really hasn't looked back since. There's Katerion Thompson continuing her hot shooting from outside. Monaco. Spend most of that first half on the bench because of foul trouble. Fast break opportunities, plenty of those for Ball State. Feasting off of Bowling Green turnovers. There's Carmen Grande getting in the paint, knocking it down for an and one opportunity. And here's the scoop and score. That was a pretty move. Good finish inside there from Ashlyn Brown. Sierra Thompson, her first basket in this one. Yeah, and you talked about the points off turnovers, Bowling Green. Uh, just turning the ball over a little bit too much, but Ball State able to capitalize on those turnovers. 17 points off turnovers for Bowling Green. Also, Ball State dominating inside the paint as well as they have the advantage 20-8 over Bowling Green. Andrea Cecil there knocking down a three. Haley Puck a couple of threes in the first half. That time capitalizing off a second chance opportunity. Another basket inside for Carmen Grande. And here's Lambert in transition. She came in struggling from beyond the arc, has knocked down a couple today. And Franny Frazier laying it home. Those are your first half highlights. Ball State on the road in front by 14. Ball State 46, Bowling Green 32 after 20 minutes of play in this Mid-American Conference women's basketball matchup. And both teams have been hot from long range. Take a look at the three-point shooting now from Ball State. The Cardinals 6 of 12, including three from Malia Howard-Bass. That was the spark Ball State wanted coming off the bench. Yeah, she came off the bench following a timeout for Ball State, hit three threes for the Cardinals, it really sparked their run. But like I said, Ball State really hasn't looked back since they got the lead by Howard Bass. And uh, they're just doing a right, good job. And it, there was a deadly one at the end of the first half for Bowling Green. Uh, they had the chance to make it a single digit ball game, but uh, Carmen Grande came down the court and drilled a three to end the half. And you saw it right there. As the Cardinals looking for their 13th win on the season in good position right now. Hey. Welcome back inside the Stroh Center on this chilly Saturday afternoon in Bowling Green, Ohio. 
Falcons trailing by 14 and looking at the first half numbers, Ball State as a team comes in first in the MAC in field goal percentage at better than 44%, better than 55% right now. Yeah, Bowling Green needs to do a much better job defensively. They want a shot at this ball game in that second quarter, especially Ball State shot 64% from the field. And it's tough when you have the balance that Ball State has had Getting fast break opportunities, knocking down shots from the outside, and a 20-8 to eight advantage on points in the paint. Yeah, Ball State, they, we mentioned it. They're an all-around type of basketball team. They can shoot it from the outside. They can drive to the paint uh, and get points there, and they can get points on the fast break as well. Uh, so Ball State doing a nice job offensively, really spreading out their game. 17-7 to seven advantage and points off turnovers right now for the Cardinals. Bowling Green with 11 first-half turnovers compared to 7 for the Cardinals. And on the glass, Bowling Green does have the advantage 18-13. They're going to have to limit Ball State on the glass if the Falcons are going to have a chance in the second half of this one. Those are your first-half numbers. Stay with us here on ESPN. Both teams back out on the floor and getting ready for the start of the third quarter here on ESPN. Ball State, the 14-point advantage in the first half, and there's the leading scorer for the Cardinals, Carmen Grande. 14 points, the only player in today's game in double figures. Franny Frazier has added nine, and then Malia Howard-Bass, all nine of her points from beyond the arc. Then for the Bowling Green Falcons, Right now, leading the way is Sydney Lambert. Lambert with eight points today. Haley Puck has added six. Katerion Thompson has added five. You notice from the leading scorers for both teams, you don't have the overall season leaders out there. Carly Santoro has been limited, and Mariah Monaco, because of foul trouble, didn't see much time in that first half. Yeah, Santoro, uh, she's had her opportunities to shoot the basketball, and unfortunately, they're just not dropping for her tonight. But Monaco, she has been in foul trouble here uh, this evening, and we'll like to see her come out here in the second half. Obviously, she's going to be out on the court. Has two fouls, so she's got to be careful here starting the second half. And before we get the third quarter underway, taking a look at the Mid-American Conference Women's Basketball Scoreboard, Central Michigan rolled to an 18-point victory today over Miami. Central Michigan improving to 11-3 on the season. And last checked, Akron and Ohio, the other 1 o'clock start today, that game was headed to overtime. Chance for Akron to get to 500 on the season, and Ohio trying to stay above 500, a record of 7-6 right now for the Bobcats. The rest of today's game feature... Buffalo taking on Northern Illinois. Buffalo, a record of 11-2 coming in. Then you have Toledo on the road against Eastern Michigan. And starting at 4.30, Western Michigan taking on Kent State. The Broncos right now, a record of 8-6, just like the Golden Flashes. Bowling Green basketball to start the quarter. You see 11 points off the fast break today for Ball State. See where that number's at by the time this one is over. Lambert looking for help. Into the hands of Haley Puck. Good look to Santoro. Too strong on that one. Santoro and Gloniak tracked it down. It's going to be a jump ball as Sam's got her hand in there. The difference in this one so far was the first quarter when Ball State outscored Bowling Green 23-13. to Cardinals jumped on Miami in the first quarter in the previous game with a 22-11 advantage. Ball State looking to continue their best start in program history. There's Monaco. Nine points for Mariah Monaco. Averaging 17 on the season. Obviously that stood on the bench didn't 
really do much to affect her confidence coming out shooting right away and knocking it down. Boniak posting up. It's Cecil just inside the arc. And short, Monaco the board. Here's Grande. Good look up ahead to Frazier. Good ball movement, but a tough shot. Offensively, Bowling Green has gotten two good looks, just have not found the bottom of the basket yet. Haley Puck attacks and had it poked away from behind by Frazier. Here's Sams. Grande, the extra pass, unable to put it home was Destiny Washington. Nice passing by Bull State on that three on one fast break, but Unfortunately, they missed the give me. Gloniak. A hop step and she walked. Bowling Green's 14th turnover. Two minutes gone by here in the third. Frazier. No good. Santoro the board. Stero may not be on the scoreboard much. But she scores inside there. Of course there, but she does add to her presence on the rebounding. Uh, she does have seven rebounds to her name. Comes in with three consecutive double-doubles. And Jane Euchre checks in for Gloniak. Euchre, two points in that first half. In nine minutes of action. Monaco, and one. Look at that, it's either the fourth or fifth and one so far by Ball State here tonight. Their ability to finish in traffic and get the ball up, even if they're getting contact and in, is quite impressive here. One more look at the assist from Grande off the inbounds. Monaco in double figures along with Carmen Grande now. Andrea Cecil in foul trouble now on the bench. Four personal fouls for Cecil, and we've still got more than 17 minutes to play. Lambert blocked. And up ahead. Three on three. Monaco trailing. And tipped out. Underneath that was Washington. Bowling Green with their third team foul. There's the numbers on Cecil today. Three points, one of four shooting, and four personal fouls. Also has two rebounds and one assist. Grande working against Santoro. And Maddie Cole will pick up the foul. Her third personal. Sierra Thompson immediately checks in, joined by Katerion Thompson. So far, a 6-2 advantage for Ball State in the third quarter. Washington fires. Unable to draw iron, and Santoro fouled going after the rebound. And a lot more whistles being blown here in the second half than in the first half. Malia Howard Bass checks in. Nine points in the first half. 
Three times she has reached double figures this season. Right on the edge of making it number four. Santoro. Here's Grande. Bounce pass inside. Threw that one into a lot of traffic and the possession arrow to Bowling Green. Just an unnecessary pass there from Grande. As good as she is distributing the basketball, just wasn't there. Yeah, it wasn't there. She got it through. It just a little bit of a bobble, but uh, an errant pass from Grande, one that we haven't seen so much here tonight from. Katerion Thompson, quick release. Pushed up ahead, Howard Bass. Now Sams looking inside, it was tipped. Fast break opportunity for the Falcons. Grande able to force Lambert back outside. Santoro gets it to go. Santoro now seven points and eight boards. A nice job to get the screen and go right into the paint. No one really stopping Santoro right there. Grande off the mark. Right back to Katerion Thompson who goes inside Euchre. Santoro, nearly an and one. Just that little hesitation enough to draw the foul. Yes, Santoro, I think it's back-to-back-to-back uh, -to -back -to -back offensive possessions now going inside the paint for Bowling Green and really getting the job done for the Falcons. Halfway through the third quarter, Ball State remains in control, up by 16 here on ESPN. Mariah Monaco letting it fly. Carmen Grande finding Monaco inside. Ball State 52, Bowling Green 36. Five minutes gone by in the third quarter. The Cardinals led by 14 after 20 minutes of play and Mariah Monaco didn't take long to reach double figures after returning to the game. She's got 12 in this one on four of eight shooting, four rebounds and one block. Santoro at the line for two, rattles home the first. Now two of three at the line today. Two points shy of another double-double opportunity. She's already got nine boards. And the battle on the floor, Ball State basketball. Here, Thompson, we're really working hard off of that rebound. In that jump ball, so the next time it is a jump ball, Bowling Green will get possession. Ball State trying to defeat Bowling Green for the seventh consecutive time. You see the numbers on Santoro today. Eight points, and she's had to earn every one of them. Howard Bass right back to Grande. Plenty of time in the shot clock. Monaco, the touch pass. Bowling Green forces a turnover. Santoro into the hands of Katerion Thompson. Kennedy Williams fires a three. More points off the bench for Bowling Green. Kennedy Williams as a 
junior at Marshall High School. We'll have more on that in a moment as Ball State answers. Kennedy Williams as a junior at Marshall High School had a school record 659 points in a season. Right now the backup point guard behind Sidney Lambert. Williams thought about it. Euchre inside. And a blocking foul. For Sams, that will be her second personal. Oh, and Green lucky that he didn't... They got away with uh, maybe a travel there on Kenny Williams, but they say the ball was knocked out of her hands or she put the ball down to dribble. That kept that possession alive. Now Euchre at the line to shoot two. That was Euchre's first free throw attempt today, trying to make it two for two. She does. Inside of four to play in the third. We've got a 13-point ball game. Another opportunity up off glass and good. Ashlyn Brown. Brown now with six points. Three of three from the field. Thompson. Terrion Thompson will shoot two. On the day, two of four at the line. Bowling Green doing a nice job here this quarter, getting some points on the board, but right now it seems every time Bowling Green gets the ball in the basketball, State comes right back down and gets points of their own. Bowling Green needs to find a way to get points and limit Ball State when they do score. It's a tough offense to slow down when you have your entire starting five that can score in double figures and several players coming off the bench that can make an impact at the offensive end. Howard Bass, too strong. Sierra Thompson the board. Here comes Kennedy Williams. Crossover. Kennedy Williams, another three. And underneath, Bowling Green's fifth team foul. And it will be free throws. Leah Howard Bass, a chance to become the third Ball State player to reach double figures. Malia's mom played college basketball at Purdue. Both Malia and her mom were Indiana All Stars. And Sams will get a rest. Franny Frazier back on. First time we've seen Angela Perry here in the ballgame now. She just checked in. It's the third game of the season for Angela Perry. Gatarion Thompson. Nine points now for Thompson. Two of four from deep. Short at the other end. And Bowling Green able to keep it one and done for the Cardinals there. Three-pointer here, and we could have a single-digit deficit for the Falcons. Important for the Falcons to get a good look here. And blocked. Monaco there. And off the fingertips of Grande. Good job there by Bowling Green, not making it and not allowing it to be an easy outlet pass. Sam's right back in. Howard Bass to the bench. Especially with how Ball State likes to get up the court pretty fast. It was a good job by Bowling Green to stay with it right there and make it hard on the Cardinals. Less than two to play. 
Thompson up top. Got another. 12 points for Thompson, the first Bowling Green player to reach double figures. And here's Sams. Team foul number six for Bowling Green. Looked like it was pretty good defense, but enough body contact to warrant a whistle. As she ran right into Angela Perry inside that paint. Perry with her arms straight up. Might have looked like she could have reached over a little bit for Perry. So Sam's going to shoot two from the line. I think really could have gone either way. And with that make, Ball State now 9 of 11 as a team at the line. Here it is one more time. Perry leaned a little bit with the arms there. Wasn't quite straight up. And now double technicals have been given to Frazier and Katerion Thompson. Not sure if this took place when the first free throw was attempted. There was a few extra words going on between Frazier and Thompson. Since it is a double technical, no, no free extra shots. free throws, right? Yeah. I think that was the confusion between both teams right there. Ended up being basically a free timeout there for a moment. <laughs> Howard Bass back on. Brady Sally just having a few words with Franny Frazier. There's the numbers on Frazier today. Nine points, three of six shooting and three personal fouls. Destiny Washington also with three fouls. Thompson, she's been hot from long range here in the third. Sierra Thompson won it in the post. With time winding down, Santoro attacks. Knocked out of bounds by the Cardinals. Credit Bowling Green. Ball State has led for most of this ball game. The Falcons continue to battle. And Bowling Green going young on the court right now. They got three freshmen, a sophomore, and a junior on the court. Santoro inside, out to Katerion Thompson, another three. Sierra Thompson underneath, the putback was denied. Now the outlet to Howard Bass. Here's Brown to Grande. Bowling Green wanted a walk. His last couple of minutes have really gotten the crowd in an uproar as Grande couldn't finish and Ashlyn Brown. The offensive rebound put back for an and one. Grande, the up and under there. Ashlyn Brown able to clean it up. Can't complete the three-point play, however. Down to 20 seconds. Bowling Green looking to close this quarter strong with the basket. Will be nice heading into that fourth quarter. They cut into this lead a little bit here in this third quarter. We need to close it down a little more. Five seconds remaining. Kennedy Williams. And Katerion Thompson was out of bounds before she let that one go. 3.1 seconds. 
Grande had the big three to end the first half. She'll get a chance here. The runner off the front of the iron. And a pretty even third quarter between these two teams. And that's okay with Ball State as the Cardinals remain in front by double figures. Kennedy Williams knocking one down from outside. And Katerion Thompson leading the offense for the Falcons with a couple of threes there in the third. Start of the fourth quarter here on ESPN. Mid-American Conference women's basketball and Ball State in front by 13. Brad Wozniki and Ryan Strodebeck, happy to have you with us today. Look for the Falcons. Try and score quickly here in the fourth quarter. Cut into this lead and make it a fight to the end for this Ball State team on the road. See good pressure out high from here from the Falcons on Ball State's first possession. Is Monaco no good? Tipped around. Monaco comes away with it. Excuse me, Monaco. Howard pass denied by Perry. Sams well short. That was the 10th rebound of the game for Santoro. Now Katerion Thompson lines up a three. Her fourth. Yeah, Katerion Thompson's been lighting up from downtown these past two games, and she is not slowing down yet. And Ashlyn Brown will shoot two at the other end. Ashlyn Brown 0 for 1 at the line today. Make that 0 for 2. Franny Frazier and Andrea Cecil check in. Yeah, Cecil's got to be careful though. She does have those four personal fouls and so one more and she will be disqualified. Second free throw is up and good. Ashlyn Brown, nine points today. Go along with five rebounds. Lambert guarded by Brown. A little bit of a mismatch there. Inside, it wasn't there. Stolen away by Monaco. Trying to find Brown, went right through her hands. Santoro splits the defense, couldn't finish. Then a Ball State foul. And Brown to the bench. Sierra Thompson. Returns after a short rest. Perry to the bench. Destiny Washington just checked in for the Cardinals playing with those three personal fouls. Falcons shooting 37% from the floor today compared to 45% for the Cardinals. Katerion Thompson, third time this season, she has knocked down five threes. She's a point shy of tying her career high of 19. Bowling Green has cut the lead down to eight. Cardinals have led by as many as 18 in this one.
A lot of these three-pointers from Kateria and Thompson coming in the second half. And inside, Destiny Washington. Ten-point game. With the BG to stay with the hot hand right now with Kateria and Thompson. Got Monaco matched up on Thompson. Trying to bother Thompson with that length. Cecil rattled in and out. And Bowling Green just committed their second team foul, trying to go after that board. 18 points, 5 of 9, 5 boards. Bowling Green, though, getting good deep looks here in the fourth quarter. And a hold underneath. Washington there in the post working against Sierra Thompson. Bowling Green today has knocked down 11 threes. Shooting 47% from beyond the arc. Falcons have gotten the line more often and knocked down more threes than the Cardinals. Ball State continuing to finish underneath. Cecil baseline. Andrea Cecil will shoot two. Good quick move there going baseline. Yeah, good job by Andrea Cecil going baseline right there. I like to see Bowling Green attack a lot here in this fourth quarter. Definitely draw some fouls. Try to get into that bonus and score while the clock is stopped. That could help you get back into this ballgame as well. Good on the first. Nikia Penny checks in. Claire Gloniak in for the Falcons. Andrea Cecil twice this season has gone for 20 or more. Lead cut back down to 10. Long way to go in this one. Washington. And inside. And one again. Nakia Penny with her first points of the day. And for Andrea Cecil, her day is done. The sophomore will finish with five points, three rebounds, one assist, and one steal. Yeah, Ball State's ability to finish inside here this afternoon and through contact has definitely shown here and it's what really propelled Ball State here tonight. Haley Puck checked in for Carly Santoro. And Penny can't complete the three-point play. Ball State now 11 of 16 at the line as a team. Puck inside, Gloniak got position. Great execution by the Falcons. Yeah, that's the second good, ex our second good entry pass right there from Haley Puck. Gloniak got good position and good easy two points for the Falcons. Seen Gloniak, Euchre, and Sierra Thompson all get involved on the inside. Sams. Shot clock winding down. Grande gets by Gloniak, left it short. Washington, the offensive board, and there will be free throws. Team foul number five for Bowling Green. Here's a look at that last entry pass from Haley Puck to Claire Gloniak. Like to see more of that. If you're a Bowling Green fan. Gloniak today, four points, two rebounds, two assists. Five twenty-two remaining and no good 
for Washington. Coming into today, it's one of the areas that, if you look at one of the bad sides of Ball State, is their free throw shooting. They came in 10th in the NAC in free throw presented at 66%. And it was costly against Central Michigan when the Cardinals went 8 of 18 from the line. That was one of Ball State's worst offensive performances of the season when they shot just 32% from the field and 1 of 12 from long range. Makia Penny traveled with the basketball. A chance again for Bowling Green to make this a single digit deficit. I think this is a big offensive possession for Bowling Green. Right before a media timeout. Katerion Thompson open. Here's Washington, takes it herself and finishes. Six points now for Destiny Washington. Nothing there for Gloniak in the post. A pass tipped and trying the to touch pass to Lambert. Bowling Green's 19th turnover of the day. Ball State in front by 12. Falcons trying to stay in it from long range. Katerion Thompson, five threes today. Destiny Washington, great look there. Penny finishing inside. Four twenty-one remaining in this one, and Freddie Falcon in good spirits, despite the fact that the Falcons they have trailed for most of this ball game. Here's Grande, Carmen Grande, one of three Ball State players in double figures today. Inside, good look, Washington to Monaco. A big reason Ball State has generated so many points is because of the points in the paint, outscoring Bowling Green in that category, 36 to 14. Monaco with that last basket, now tied for the team high with 14. Gloniak, no good, and Penny the board. Grande, the extra pass, too hard off the glass, Gloniak the board. Katerion Thompson, back to Lambert. Bowling Green can't afford to use up too much time on these possessions as Santoro draws a foul. Team foul number three for Ball State. There's the numbers on Monaco today. The team's leading scorer, just shy of her season average of 17 a game. And in the second half, she's done a nice job of not being able to pick up any more fouls. And eight of her 14 points in the second half. Fifteen on the shot clock. Thompson. Off the screen. Rattles it home. A new career high in three-pointers made with six for Thompson. It took a lot of time off that clock, though, for Bowling Green. Definitely need to start getting up shots in a more efficient, more timely manner for them. It's also a career high in points now with 21. You can just see the confidence soaring with Katerion Thompson. Just a sophomore. She had... We knew she had that ability coming out of high school there at Lima Senior to score the basketball. Just took some time to adjust to the speed of the college game. 
you know, we saw her ability on Wednesday against Eastern Michigan and knock down the three, and then she comes back and tops that here tonight. So it's nice to see that a sophomore stepping up for Bowling Green, but they need more players to step up. They want to continue and change their ways here in the MAC. Approaching two minutes to play. Ball State looking for their 13th win, up by 13 right now, and an illegal screen is called. And Brady Sally is going to bring in Aaliyah Walker. Walker, the only Ball State player that has played today that has not scored. And Sams will go to the line. Jasmine Sams, two for two at the line today. A chance to join Monaco, Howard Bass, and Grande in double figures. Monaco returns. The career high numbers for Katerion Thompson in points and three pointers made in a game. One for two for Sams. Santoro puts it on the floor. The reverse. Carly Santoro with her 10th double-double of the season with that basket. Now 15 double-doubles for her career. The loose ball. Gloniak on the floor. And Bowling Green gets the timeout. 137 remaining. It is an official's timeout. Seventy six sixty four your score. And Carmen Grande, number two in the nation in assists per game, leads the Mid American Conference at better than nine a game. Get a look at those right now. Grande seven assists today. Good look inside there for basket underneath. Handles the basketball very well. Distributes very well and scores the basketball. A triple threat. And here off the turnover in transition. Up ahead for Annie Frazier. That was part of that early run for the Cardinals. The overall numbers today for Grande. 14 points. 5 of 13 shooting. A pair of boards. And those seven assists, she also has one block and four steals, an all-around performance. Take a look now at the upcoming schedule for the Bowling Green Falcons. Next up, it's only going to get tougher. On the road at Central Michigan. Central Michigan, the favorite to win the MAC West, a record of 11 and three after their victory earlier today against Miami of Ohio. Then on the road against Akron there at Rhodes Arena. A couple home games against Kent State and Ohio. Ohio survived in overtime today, defeating Akron 70 to 67. Then these two teams will meet again on January 24th there in Muncie. Lost today and the Falcons will drop to 0-3 in the Mid-American Conference. This has been the biggest deficit so far for the Falcons against Mid-American Conference teams. 
Bowling Green was right there in the MAC opener on the road against Western Michigan. And then we mentioned earlier about the loss in the final seconds to Eastern Michigan this past Wednesday. Yeah, they've been in every ball game pretty much, and they're, they're hanging tough with Ball State right now. A couple of long runs by the Cardinals has propelled them so far, but Bowling Green still playing tough. And Franny Frazier going for the steal, knock Lambert to the floor. No whistle, it will be Falcons basketball out on the near side. Santoro drives. And Carly Santoro will shoot two with 1.14 remaining. Santoro has definitely been able to get inside the paint a lot more here in the second half. It's led to some free throws and some points for her. Off the iron on the first. Santoro now two of five at the line today. She had been shooting the ball better from the line over the last five games at 82%. Splits the pair there. And a quick foul from Katerion Thompson. That was her fourth personal. Sierra Thompson also with four fouls. And Grande adds to her point total for today. 15 now to lead her team. Ball State has had the lead for over 35 minutes in this one. Santoro knocks down the three. Her first three of the game gives her 14 points on the day. And a quick timeout with less than a minute to play. Yes, the Ball State Cardinals have led for more than 90% of today's game. Getting off to a quick start was huge for the Cardinals here on the road. We'll look ahead now for Ball State. The Cardinals will travel to Akron next, then home against Buffalo. That's a definitely one of the highlighted matchups in the Mid-American Conference season with Ball State coming in as one of the top teams in the preseason poll and Buffalo the favorite to win the MAC East. And two tough road games at Toledo. Savage Arena never an easy place to win. The Rockets on the road today playing Eastern Michigan. We already mentioned Ball State and Bowling Green will have their second meeting on January 24th. Second personal foul on Carly Santoro. Willie Green trying to stay in this one with fouling intentionally. Not letting Ball State take time off the clock. And like we mentioned before, Ball State, that's the one area of the team that they've struggled at is the free throw line. But they've been able to hold their own here tonight. Willie Green just hoping that they can miss a couple here. 17 of 25 after that first make. Bowling Green going to go with a little bit of a smaller lineup. Thompson in for Gloniak. Katerion Thompson, that is. Off the screen, Santoro gives it up. Now gets it back. Sam's going for the steal. Santoro knocks down another. Nine-point game. Monaco, the baseball pass. 
Washington able to pick it up. Another foul with 43 seconds remaining. And for Sierra Thompson, her day is done. She'll finish with two points and four boards. Receives a nice hand from the Bowling Green faithful as she goes to the bench. Washington, a good person to foul. For Bowling Green, uh, coming into today, she was just shooting around 50%, and that's where she's at today, two of four. Knocks down the first. Two for two, 11 point game. Katerion Thompson blocked by Frazier. Tries to save it, it's into the hands of Washington. And Haley Puck with the foul. 29 seconds remaining. See the numbers on Sierra Thompson today. She's going to continue to grow. Only a freshman. Very aggressive on the boards. Once again, Ball State knocking them down, down the stretch. And the block by Monaco. Her third block of the game. That will give Ball State six blocks as a team. They come in averaging better than five a game. Santoro from the elbow. And Monaco battling for the board. And it's Monaco called for the foul. For Mariah Monaco, that will end her day. Didn't agree with the call. Thought she had good position there. Monaco will finish 14 points, six rebounds. Three blocks and one steal. Not sure why there is delay here there. Taking time on the substitution as Haley Puck was waiting at the line. Haley Puck knocking down her first free throw of the day. She's got seven. Make it eight. Can't yeah, really call her mud. Made much sense that first quarter. She knocked down two quick threes. But not much else. Final seconds in this one. The ball state took control of the game early. Led for. More than 36 minutes in this ball game. 84 to 73, the final. The Cardinals with their best start in program history add to it with their 13th win. Carmen Grande leading the way for the Cardinals and Brady Sally. Welcome back to the Stroh Center here in Bowling Green, Ohio, where the Falcons fall today to the Ball State Cardinals by a final score of 84 to 73. Bowling Green now 0-3 in the Mid-American Conference, and Ball State improves to 2-1 in the MAC. Mariah Monaco firing early and often. 
Carly Santoro attacking the basket. Santoro and Monaco were limited in the first half, but Carly Santoro does end up with a double-double in this one, her 10th double-double of the season, 15th of her career. Again, you go back to that first quarter and how important that start was for Ball State. Yeah, they, they are a strong starting team. That was a key for Bowling Green coming into today. Don't let Ball State get out and get a lead early, but they did exactly that. Howard Bass came out strong with nine or three three-pointers, which alluded to nine points, sparked a run for Ball State. They really did not have uh, or look back after that. Howard Bass led the way for Ball State to get the lead. Ball State ran with it and Bowling Green had trouble coming back. Ball State led by as many as 18 in this ball game. Credit Bowling Green for the way they continued to fight in this one. But the balance of Ball State, we knew coming in, they had a good overall balanced scoring attack. All five starters averaging in double figures. Today, Ball State finishes with four players in double figures and eight of the nine players that played today scored. Yeah, Ball State, they are a very balanced team, very good team. The only area we talked about that they struggled at was the free throw line, and they showed here tonight why they are such a balanced team. You notice in the paint they scored 36 points compared to 16 for Bowling Green. That was a huge issue for the Falcons here tonight, and really Bowling Green, uh, they played to the buzzer, though. I give them credit. They played hard to the buzzer. It's just that first half, first quarter that really did them in tonight. The final numbers from this one, Ball State, Shoots 49% from the field. Points in the paint, dominant. 36 to 16. You credit players like Washington and Frazier for attacking the basket. Also, Ashlyn Brown off the bench. Good performance for her, finishing with nine points. Four of four from the field. That's part of more of that balance and the support that the Cardinals get off the bench for that very tough starting lineup. Yeah, also, you got to look at all the three-point opportunities, not from beyond the arc, but inside the paint, the, they battled through contact, got a lot of contact, got the ball up, and got it through the hoop. That helped them a lot here tonight as well. This will be a tough one for Bowling Green because of the effort they put in on this one and also the way the Falcons shot the ball from long range, trying to climb their way back into this one. The Falcons knocked down 14 threes today on 28 attempts. And Katerion Thompson, what a performance for her today in her young career. Only a sophomore. Knocks down six threes. That was a career high. She finished with 21 points. That was a career high. Three times this season now she's had at least five threes. Yeah, she is uh, stepping up big this season. She's really expanded her role. She's going downtown a lot more, doing a nice job. Uh, Thompson, she is only a sophomore like you mentioned, so it's nice to see for Bowling Green. They are a young team. Only two seniors on this squad right now, and Bowling Green, the it's tough. you got to take what you can with such a young team. They're going to make mistakes, but they're battling. They, they keep on uh, staying in ball games. but it's just too many mistakes early on, too many turnovers here in Mac play so far for Bowling Green, which is hurting them. And next up, a big challenge ahead again for the Falcons as Bowling Green will travel to Central Michigan. The Chippewas right now, a record of 11-3. and three. Central Michigan just continuing to get the job done as the favorite to win the Mid-American Conference West Division. So that's going to do it for today's broadcast as Ball State has now won seven in a row against Bowling Green. Once again, your final. Ball State 84, Bowling Green 73. For Ryan Strodebeck and our producer, Joe Goodman, I'm Brad Wozniki saying so long to watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks. Log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.